I'm Kenny. I've spent the last 13 years living on the road, hitchhiking all over the planet. And this is Nick. We grew up together. Now we're embarking on an adventure to see the best breweries on the planet. We'll be hitchhiking, meeting amazing people, and drinking phenomenal beer. It's the backpacking beer adventure. Let's get hopping. All right, so I didn't think it was going to work actually for a second. I was like, oh, the yeast isn't working, but then I tried to pick it up by the handle. <laughs> and it is screaming. I'm going to off gas it here a little bit. <laughs> it smells so good though. Alright, I'm gonna do a little bit more. I just don't want it to like over. But... Oh! Nothing? <laughs> hey everybody, my name's Chuck and I'm the owner of this store. It's called What Ails Ya? That means that everything around here that happens is my fault. We opened the store in 1996. It was just a pure act of my passion for home brewing. It's done more than help fulfill that. And I'd like to also say that some of the nicest people I've ever met have been associated with home brewing. He wants 16 pounds of two row malt, two pounds of 80, one pound of victory, and one pound of Munich. And it is all to be milled over here. We're a little bit short. We want 10 pounds in there. And you might notice I overfilled it with two ounces because the bag weighs two ounces. This is our library. Yeah. It's kind of hard to compete with Amazon on a lot of these books, but yeah. it's still you got to have some basic books. I have a really, really good selection of hops. One of the things that are becoming a lot more popular are the cryo hops, where the lupulin uh, a product in the hop is isolated from the rest of the vegetable material, making it a lot, lot more efficient, especially for late additions and for whirlpooling and dry hopping. They're really, really, really good. Every brewery you talk to has a different idea as what they want to do for their equipment. So I like to carry a small variety with the ability to order in what anybody wants. Um, I have an alliance with just about every distributor for any kind of hardware. Another thing that's getting more and more popular in the industry is plastic carboys, and especially with the wide mouth so you can get your arm in there and clean it really, really good. Yeah, I've always loved these just so you can see through and it just feels really nice, but it's yeah, a pain. <laughs> it is a pain. Watching fermentation is fun. It moves around and stuff, but it's like a lava lamp. Yeah. You know, once you see it a couple times, yeah, then it's not quite as exciting. Siphoning devices here, racking canes. Right here is a basic homebrew starting kit as far as the equipment. I come in here and get fresh ingredients and talk to somebody who's had a lot of knowledge <laughs> over it's the invaluable. years. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, some of the younger generation, they don't realize the value of that. We started selling bottle caps by the pound, which works out really good. Wine is a big part of our business, too. We sell a lot of wine kits. They make great wine. They're super easy. And we sell a lot of them, thank goodness. you got to combine everything in order to keep your doors open. Thanks for coming in, guys. Yes, thank you. All righty. Spices and herbs and stuff, all kinds of orange peels and juniper berries and cacao nibs and coriander for those people who want to make a vit beer. I don't have enough room in the back when I get to order a grain in, so we have to bring it in and I usually keep a pallet out here. It's kind of neat for the ambiance too, and the nice aroma of the grain. People love coming in and, oh, it smells so good in here. Another thing that's getting more and more popular in the industry is mead. I mean, it is unbelievable how many people are getting into mead. So I carry a line of local honey. Obviously the PBW and the Star Sand and the Iota 4. We carry a line of immersion copper chillers. Even in the summertime, we have to pre-chill the water that goes through the chiller that's in your beer. So Yeah, Larry picked one up the other day and we used it a couple nights ago. And yeah. So much faster than yeah. doing an ice bath. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's kind of a quick picture of what ails you. We also have a, a club 
It's called the Barley Boys. One of the bottom lines is great beer and great friends. So, so just share some beers, share some advice, Absolutely. some stories. Absolutely. Hell yeah. I like it. So I'll just make a quick statement and say, support your local home brew store no matter where you are. When you need them, they'll be there. And if you don't support them, when you need them, they won't be there. And it makes a big difference to all of us. So I just cut the bottom out and I mounted the burner on it and then I cut this out. Yeah, and there's airflow. <laughs> True homebrew. So we're doing a hazy IPA. You're good, keep coming. Yeah, you that blue line hits on the top is what your gravity is, your starting gravity. So like in winemaking, before they'll go out and pick the grapes, they'll squeeze a grape onto there. Yeah, and then they'll see what the sugar content is. We're almost finished moving the wort over to the boil kettle, right about seven gallons. This particular recipe, we boil for an hour and then we'll add the hops and then we'll cool it down and go from there. It's at 11 brick or 1.050. Out of Temperature. That's it. Cheers. My name's Luke. Uh, I've been working here for almost since we opened, about five years ago. My name is Kyle. I am currently the tap room manager. Started out as bartender, just kind of worked my way through the ranks and happy to be here drinking some beer with you fine gentlemen. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona, pretty close to downtown, close to the airport. This building here is cold storage. It's a few thousand square feet. We're packaging barrel aged beer like once every four to six weeks or so. About six of these are actually barrel fermented lager beer, just kind of how they would do it in Germany before they had metal copper stainless tanks. As we grow, we built a building about a mile away. We're calling it Brill right now, E-R-I-L-L. -L. And that's just gonna be auxiliary production facility. A ton more spirit barrel aging. We'll have a section put out for like 200 barrels. And then the rest of it is a full lager facility. Once that's up and running, you'll definitely see our beer way more around the state, and hopefully another tap room in the future as well. Um, yeah, so this is our mill room. Our old agricultural mill is right here from some farm in Canada. It goes into our grist case before it's piped into chain and disc plumbing going into our mash tun. So kind of a nice blend of high tech and rustic. The grain that we're milling is also uh, Arizona grown. It's all grown in the Verde Valley. It's helping our river up there uh, get, a, get a bit more flow than it had in the past while the farmers are switching over to barley. Pretty amazing how yeah. that's all happening. Super cool. We have a 10 barrel brew house. It's all 30 barrel tanks, so we have to turn it three times in order to fill these tanks. We just brewed this yesterday. I didn't expect to walk into to that. <laughs> this is kind of a cool beer it's called Dankworth, uh, which is a series we do. We kind of highlight what we think are like some really cool emerging hop varietals every time. This one we're doing with two hops, with Enigma and Strata and we brew it in the fashion of like old school New England double IPA. A little more bitter, not as much cereal grain, not as much wheat or oats and stuff. We wait to dry hop it post fermentation, which really lends to this like really clean, crisp, but still soft, juicy beer. 
This was like our like, let's get up and going as a brewery. Yeah. Whatever it takes, cram, little... cram shit in here. It's good for like two people max to be in here at a time. <laughs> when you do season two, hopefully um, the Brill location will be set up and we'll have a little more for you to look at. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be pretty in there. A lot of the part-time help that we have back here is our, our bartending staff. They kind of get a, a taste of what's happening behind the scenes and they can in turn convey it to our, our bar patrons and share the story of what's going on back here. I try and get them to like geek out on like a glassware. dark wild a glassware, <laughs> like putting a pub ale in a mug yeah. um, because it just creates a different experience for the drinker. If you create the experience and you give the right narrative to these types of beers, like people get excited about it. Exactly. If you talk about it and you show your passion and you serve it in a, in a mug, then people are stoked and they're gonna drink three and have a great night. That's the tour pretty much, man. We can try some beers and talk about them for a second, yeah. yeah. Kyle grabbed some beers to try here. Um, this one's Big Spill Pilsner. A staff uh, favorite. Just a German Pilsner base and then we uh, hop it late in the kettle with a bit of Nelson and then dry hop it with Nelson as well. This is our Valley beer. We wanted to make a local alternative to macro beer. We didn't know how well it would sell. It ended up taking off. It was, uh, it became a big hit and we thought we would just be sitting on lager forever. We're almost big enough to have it eat all over Arizona once we get that second location open. The Bianco restaurants, world famous pizza restaurant here in Phoenix, all three of their locations, the first time we canned it, bought us almost out of our whole stock. And so we were like, great, it's gonna be a hit. That got us down the road of wanting to make like a nice hoppy German Pilsner. And then that was a hit. So both of these loggers we keep on uh, all the time, essentially. This is our Spellbinder core beer, um, something you can see all over Phoenix, Citra and Mosaic uh, Hazy IPA. It smells great. Yeah. And it's one of those where it seems like the feedback that we get that each new batch is even better than the last kind of thing. So it yeah. just keeps getting better and better. So. It's a coffee oatmeal stout. It's a little old school in recipe design, but we've really dialed it in with modern roast malts and stuff that round out the flavor a bit more. It's not as astringent as those old school stouts can, could be. As smooth as hell, we load it with oats, American ale yeast, and then blend it with just a touch of cold brew coffee before packaging. And the cold brew coffee is from Press. They're another local. Phoenix-based company. Yeah, yeah, Press Coffee. Yep. They're like a huge operation now. They just they just opened this massive production facility. It's one of those cool relationships we built in our first like six months of being a brewery, mm -hmm. of yeah. like wanting to make a coffee stout be like a staple. And yeah. we've been brewing this for since we've opened. This is a German style Pilsner that we did with Horace Agedales and Superstition Eatery. We use a heritage grain grown in like um, rural Germany that's still four malted. It's called Barke malt, fermented in one wild turkey barrel, two like regular mead bourbon barrels, a juniper gin mead barrel, uh, a couple blueberry cider barrels. It was a cool project. We'll probably make this kind of a core beer actually and really? moving forward once we get those big oak tanks at the new facility. Well, thanks you guys. Yeah, yeah man. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cheers. Good luck on the road. Safe travels. I'm basically taking one of my classic stout recipes, very slight uh, modulation on it. It's gonna be about 11.5%, but with Larry's input, we are soaking it on oak chips soaked in brandy. Brandy barrel. Brandy barrel oak chips with uh, cherry and cocoa nibs. None of that is happening right now, because right now we're just gonna brew the stout tonight. That all happens later, like in the weeks to come. Uh, so, way of starting off, just like any homebrew, we're heating up water, <laughs> drinking a beer, just standing around heating up water, drinking a beer. <laughs> Watch. Yeah. 
This is specialty grain. Basically all the deliciousness and character that's gonna make this the epic stout that it wants to be so badly. Okay, Google, set a timer for 40 minutes. Starting now. So he's gonna pour about half of this just to get all the goodness out. This recipe has been messed with in my mind for eight years or something. So traditionally stouts are not like known for their hop character, but there's gonna be so many flavors in this one. To balance it, we're blasting it with hops. And it's a 60 minute boil after that with hops going in, I think almost every 10 minutes. If you're running a very messy and unorganized here. Making some good ass beer though, somehow. This is a big ass stout. This one is one you sip and then all of it starts coming in. Yes. One sip and you're like, all right, I could write a small book between now and yes. the next sip. <laughs> yeah. Then we cool this sucker down. Trying to get it down as quickly as possible to a temperature that yeast can tolerate, and then we put the yeast in. We are dropping. This coil is kicking ass right now. The yeast eats the sugar, turns it into alcohol, cuts out that sweetness, turns it into a beautiful beast. While we're gone, Larry will take over with uh, adding cocoa and oak and just making it a beautiful beer. So this is where it all lives. It's a beer we brewed the other night. You can see it's already bubbling. Now we got the badass stout waiting to get where it needs to go. California. I think we're in Goodyear, but the west side of Phoenix, basically. I would love to get a ride past the 303, ideally as far as the 85. I mean, obviously the best ride would be someone just going to San Diego. We'll take whatever we can get, including this car right here. Is this the one, Nick? No, nah, I don't have high hopes. California, beautiful. If we get picked up by some Cali plates, we're dancing. The next ride will be the most important one, kind of. <laughs> Cop came, picked us up, told us we couldn't be on the highway within the metro area. And instead of giving us a ride out of the metro area, he gave us a ride to this surface road, <laughs> way south of the highway. We're trying to stick our thumbs out and get a ride, but it's not looking good. Two and a half hours more of walking until we get to the highway again. There is a truck stop there, so. Might be able to hitch a ride from there because it's definitely going to be dark. And our chances of getting to San Diego are getting a little bit weirder. We're on our way to San Diego. Yeah. I think you get a Watson. Watson? Cool. KP! I like it.